Stay tuned this episode of Cars Plus to learn how to do a quality wrinkle finish paint job using VHT paint products with instructions that are not on the label that will make your project turn out in a foolproof manner. as well as the paint we're going to use and of course the masking tape. Something to note here, part of the reason for the wrinkle finish is it'll look cool but also there's rust pitting even though we've cleaned it up there's pitting on here that'd be really hard to get rid of and you could do a lot of priming and sanding and we didn't want to go to that trouble. Besides the wrinkle finish will look really good. We will be masking this plastic assembly off before we start and what we're going to do is we're going to use VHT Wrinkle Plus paint but what you're going to learn in this video is that the instructions on the Wrinkle Plus paint do not give you enough information to make this work properly. And we're going to show you the little trick that will make it absolutely work for you. Obviously, you're going to want to shake up your paint really well. Probably better than a minute before you go spray it. But today, we're working in the garage because it's real windy outside. You might hear in the background kind of a fan noise. We've got a big fan in this garage. So we're almost using it as a paint booth to take care of this. That's why I'm not even going to wear a mask because all the fumes will be pulled right away. Here we have prep all, which we're going to wipe down our valve cover with this to take off anything else that happens to be on it that might cause our paint not to work out well. We'll just wipe it down real quick. And remember the sort of black spots that's on it are because we do have some pitting on this part, but with a wrinkle finish we'll never see that when we're done. That's all going to go away. But you can also see, look at all this stuff I just took off of there. So even though it had been cleaned off, it's still full of dirt you want off of the part before you actually spray it. Now the VHT instructions here tell me I should spray it three times with a crosshatch pattern. I found you've got to spray it four times and the crosshatch isn't going to matter as long as you change the direction each time you spray it. So we're going to spray around it four times by the time we're done. And one of the problem areas we're going to have is right underneath these holders that are put on here. They're not removable. So it's not going to ever be as good under there because I can't totally get everything. So right underneath where you can't see is where it won't wrinkle possibly. But that won't be visible on the finished part. And you notice I'm not worried about the cross hatching. I'm just going kind of all over the place, making sure I get an even coverage, eight to 10 inches apart or from the part each time. Now that's one coat and I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of minutes before I start spraying it again. Back with our second coat. And like I said, the key here is just to change your direction. The cross hatch, whether or not you actually do that, doesn't matter as much as change your direction all the time so that you get everything even and well spread out. So this is the second of four. Remember, I said four. I don't care what VHT says, but three, four is what you're going to need. Here we are with coat number three. This is the third time VHT says this is enough, and I'm telling you, it won't be. And I've got quite a bit of paint on here, but I've never been able to make this stuff work with only three coats. We're on our fourth and final coat here that we're gonna put on. And then we're gonna show you the secret to how we make this actually work because it's not on the can at all what we're going to do next, which will cause this to turn out every time. I should also say, in case you have one little spot, you got the paint too thin, you can theoretically come back and coat that later. But hopefully by four coats, you've got it properly coated all over. So now we're going to take and show you the secret to making this work. This is the secret 
to making this particular paint work. You'll notice this is set at 85 or above degrees. You need to have a lot of heat. If you're in Phoenix, for example, in the summer, you won't need to turn on heat. You can just use the ambient air temperature. But in a lot of places, you're going to have to do just what we're doing here. Because in Prescott, Arizona, we're a mile high. We're only going to be about 74 today. So we've taken this up to what we call the machine shop. And I've actually got the electric heat running to bring it up to 85 degrees. It's not on the VHT can. But if you don't heat it up like this, you won't get the unequal shrinking real well. Where the surface puckers up and you get a beautiful wrinkled finish. You've got to have high heat. Don't care what the can says. I haven't been able to make this successfully work without the temperature up like this. So what we're going to do is show this to you at the end of the video in just a few seconds. Here we are with the finished valve cover. It took about 30 minutes for it to go to the wrinkle finish that you see here. And we've let it sit for a couple hours to harden up further. But remember, the key to all this, four coats... 85 degrees and above if you want results like this on whatever part you're trying to get a wrinkle finish on with VHT paint.